Nora, don't worry. She won't find out. You don't know my mom. Stop worrying. Have some fun. This carnival is only set up here once every five years. Yeah, look. Have some of my cotton candy. Oh, look. It's a mini roller coaster. Let's go on that one. Then I want to go to the haunted house. Fine. <laughs> I had an exhilarating night. I was only 14 years old and it was the first time I'd ever snuck out with my friends. You're probably wondering why I needed to sneak out because what I was doing with my friends was totally harmless. Well, my mom was a total tiger mom. I wasn't allowed to do anything. I was only allowed to go to and from school and she completely controlled all of my extracurricular activities. I had gymnastics on Tuesdays and Thursdays, piano on Wednesdays, and swimming on Fridays. Apart from those days, I had to be either at home or school. If I went anywhere, it had to be with her, my dad, and my younger sister, Lily. I wasn't allowed to have sleepovers with my friends or to go to any of theirs. I had to top every single class or I was punished. And just like the original Tiger Mom, my mom didn't allow me to participate in anything fun at school. No school plays, no fun days, nothing. In fact, if my mom found out that we were having a fun activity at school on a particular day, she'd force me to stay home to study. If you think this sounds awful, keep watching because it gets worse, especially after my little escapade with my friends. So you can probably guess that sometimes I felt like I needed a break. I was frustrated and sad. And when my friends suggested that I sneak out to go to the carnival, I hesitated for a while, but I eventually agreed. I thought my plan was foolproof. I'd come home after school and tell her that I had a big test to study for the next day. Then I'd change my clothes and sneak out of my window to meet my friends. My mom never disturbed me while I was studying, so I felt like I didn't have to worry about that. I left the window open a bit, so it'd be easier to sneak back in when I got back. I came back home at about 7, which is not late at all, right? After having the time of my life, I thought my night could only get better, but boy was I wrong. I opened my bedroom window and tiptoed inside. I walked over to my light and switched it on. Oh, so you're back? Mom, what are you doing in here? Should I be the one asking questions right now? I went over to Emily's house to study instead of staying here. Don't lie to me. Look at this picture Emily posted a few minutes ago on Instagram. You were all at that carnival downtown. Look, isn't this you? She pushed the phone in front of my face and I recognized myself. Mom, you're following Emily on Instagram? I didn't even know you had an account. I made a fake account so I'd know what you're doing all the time. It's finally served me well. Now explain yourself. I explained to my mom that I needed a break. I told her the truth hoping she'd go easy on me, but... That's it. You're not allowed to have friends anymore. What? You heard me. And you're changing schools by the end of the week. What? But that punishment makes no sense. What makes no sense is your behavior. Go shower and go to bed. My mom left my room. I had a miserable shower then went to sleep crying. I hoped that I'd wake up the next day and she'd have changed her mind. But when I got up, she told me I'd be staying home that day. She took my sister to school and my dad left for work. I was home alone for a while. Then my mom came back with a huge smile on her face. You got in. In where? Into the most prestigious private school in our state. Here, I already bought your uniforms. Go try them on. The uniforms were hideous. It was a white undershirt, orange jacket, and a plaid green and orange skirt. I looked at myself in the mirror and felt like I was going to barf. Wow, that looks awesome! You're starting tomorrow. Can I say goodbye to my friends one last time? No. I wanted to cry. The next day, my mom dropped me off at my new school. Before I got out of the car, she reminded me that I wasn't allowed to have friends. If they say hello, you can say hello back, but that's as far as it goes. If I find out that you are making any friends, there will be severe consequences. And trust me when I say severe. I got out of the car and she said nothing comforting to me. So here I was, starting a new school, for no reason. Why did she have to be like this? I walked into the building and everyone ignored me. We're off to a great start, I guess, I thought. I tried to find my way to the principal's office because I had no idea what class I was in or where I was supposed to be going. The place was so huge that I ended up getting lost, so I asked a cute little first-year student to help me, and she took me to the office. Hello, are you Nora? Yes, ma'am. I've heard lots of awful things about you. Your mother says you're totally out of control, but this place is sure to straighten you out. My mother said, what? At this point, I was about to explode. I was a perfect child with straight A's and exemplary behavior. I'd only done a bad thing once. And this is what she said about me? Don't worry. 
I believe in new beginnings. This is a great school. Here, I printed your schedule for you. Your first class is French. She walked me to my first class. The teacher wasted no time and asked me to introduce myself in French to the entire class. I was a bit embarrassed, but by the time I was done, some of my classmates were clapping. Wow, your French is perfect! How lovely! I sat next to a cute boy who winked at me and smiled. I smiled back then sat down and took out my notebook. After class, he walked over to my desk. Hey, my name is Jamal. What's yours? It's Nora. Do you want me to show you around the school? I could meet you at lunchtime and give you a tour. Sure. I quickly replied because, like I already mentioned, he was cute. Like, really cute. Like, no boys at my previous school were this cute. But then I remembered what my mom said, and I was crushed. Wait a minute, I just remembered I have something to do in the library. Maybe I can meet you after school. I ran to look for my next class and spent the rest of the day trying to avoid him. That night as I tried to fall asleep, all I could think about was Jamal and his cute smile. I wished I could at least get to know him, and I wished I was allowed to have friends. The next day, he tried to sit next to me for every class. I kept giving him one-word responses when he spoke to me, but he didn't seem annoyed or frustrated at all. Instead, he became more persistent. The day after, he started passing me notes. You're shy, aren't you? By the way, you have gorgeous eyes. I melted. I decided to write one back. I'm not really shy. It's just that my mom says I'm not allowed to have friends. Also, I think you're really cute. He blushed as he read it, and we continued passing notes to each other for the rest of the day. His last note that day was... Have a wonderful night. Love always, your secret friend. Now if you think this story is just another love story with a happy ending waiting to happen, think again. Because in my life, good moments just don't last. We continued passing each other notes for about a week. Then one Friday afternoon, he sent this. It's been great talking to you, and I'm glad you transferred to this school. Since I'm your secret friend, do you think maybe we could go on a secret date sometime? I smiled at him and shoved the note into my backpack. I thought about how wonderful it would be, just me and him on a hot date. But how would we pull that off? I decided I'd go home and think about it. The next day, I couldn't really concentrate on anything because I was thinking about how I could go on a date with Jamal. After dinner, I went up to my room to get started on my homework, and my mom was standing there looking angrier than I'd ever seen her. What is this? What, mom? I found this note in your backpack. Mom, why are you going through my things? Because I don't trust you. So first you sneak out with some girls, and now you're making plans to meet a boy? And you've been talking to him? When I specifically told you that you're not allowed to speak to anyone? You're despicable, Nora. She left my room and slammed the door. I was terrified because I didn't know what to expect next. I couldn't concentrate on any homework because my mind was racing. I went to my bed and fell asleep. The next morning I woke up to loud banging noises on my bedroom door. I opened the door and saw two cops standing outside. Are you Nora? Yes. Pack a bag, you're coming with us. My mom appeared behind them smirking. Mom, what's going on? Where am I going? I can't be going to jail for passing notes in class. That's crazy. I told them what you did. What? That you've been stealing from that convenience store a few blocks away. What are you talking about? I've never stolen a thing in my life. She turned to one of the police officers and tried to explain to him that I was just lying. But at that moment, I started to realize what my mother had done. She'd framed me for a crime, and now my life was going to take a horrible turn. I didn't know what to do, so I left with the police. I mean, where would I run? And my mom was clearly doing nothing to defend me, and don't talk about my dad. He just let her do anything. So listen, dear. We all do wrong things in life. This is why rehabilitation centers exist, and I'm hoping that the one we take you to will transform your life. Rehabilitation center? You're going to juvie, darling. What? No! I burst into tears. There was no way I'd last more than a second in there. I was as fragile as a rose and they were about to put me in a place with a bunch of rough girls who had done really bad things. Can you imagine the horror? It was more awful than I could have imagined. There were five girls assigned to each room and it seemed like the girls in my room didn't like me from the beginning. We had to wake up at 5 o'clock every morning to shower and get ready for the day. We had classes in the center so I wasn't allowed to go to school and I had no way to communicate with Jamal. I was heartbroken and I hoped he didn't think I just left without saying goodbye. The middle of the day was when we were allowed to go outside for a while to play sports. This is when many fights happened so sometimes that part of the day was cancelled. It was some time during my second week I met Gina on the basketball court. She looked like one of the baddest girls in there, but for some strange reason, she seemed to like me. 
You don't look like you belong here. What did you do? Nothing. My mom just hates me. I understand. I mean, I've done lots of awful things, but my mom hates me too. I'll look out for you, little Nora. She winked. I don't even know where she learned my name. Gina came to my defense several times in that place. There was this one time some girls wanted to beat me up for some shampoo, but she taught them a lesson and they never bothered me again. It turned out that we were supposed to get out at the same time, and when we discovered this, she had a bright idea. Don't go back there. Where? To your house. Your mom is only going to make your life more miserable. So, where am I going to go? Come with me. You can stay with my family. Well, not my biological family. My street family. We'll take care of you. Then you can talk to Jamal all you want. So I sat down and considered both of my options. The first was to go back home with my mom who would continue hurting me for no reason. Or to go with my new friend to a completely different life, where I would have more control. What do you think I chose? I went with Gina. When we were both released, I hid behind her as she walked to her friend's car. My mom was also there to pick me up, but I made sure she didn't see me. And then, we sped away. My life is still complicated today though. I don't go to school anymore, and I've had to do lots of bad things to survive. But I'm much happier than I was before. Jamal and I text all the time now, but I'm not sure I'm his type anymore. I hope that someday I will be able to save enough money to start going to school again and to build a normal life for myself. But for now, I'm just trying my best. Are you sure this is the item you want me to hide, Shelly? Gideon, my twin brother, looked at me with a raised eyebrow. Yeah, sure. Why not? I handed over the old tattered jewelry box that Grandma left for me in her will. We couldn't get the box open because there wasn't a key, so why not? Gideon handed me his Xbox. Okay, so, you know the rules. The person who figures out the riddle and gets back their item first will forever be dubbed the riddle champion. Remember, you're only allowed to hide the items in the amusement park, home, or at school. Gideon and I shook on it. We went our separate ways, prepared our riddles, and hid the items. When Grandma left me this box, she told me that I should keep the box safe until the time was right. Little did I know that the game with Gideon was about to ruin my life. Hey, my name is Shelly. If you want to find out how this game ruined my life, watch the rest of this video. I don't want you to make the same mistake I did. Gideon and I have a great bond, but in spite of this, we have always been competitive with each other, pushing each other and ourselves to be the best at what we do. The next day, Gideon and I handed each other a piece of paper enclosed with the riddle. We eyed each other, shook hands to seal the bet, and we headed to our rooms. I opened the piece of paper and on it was written, Rip me off quick so I no longer hide. Once that is done, you'll see what's concealed inside. It has to be a package! I shouted as I ran down to my parents' office. Yesterday, they received a few packages. It must be one of those, I thought. I burst into the office and began the search for the packages. After searching for a few minutes, the only package I saw was in the cupboard, all the way at the top. I dragged Dad's chair from behind his desk and placed it in front of the cupboard. I tiptoed to reach the package. Almost got it. I stretched my fingers as far as they could go. My fingertips touched the package. I just needed to stretch a bit more. Suddenly, the office door opened and Dad's voice startled me. Shelly, Mom said dinner is ready. The chair wobbled below me and I crashed to the floor. Ouch. I rubbed my shoulder as I struggled to a sitting position. Dad rushed over to help. Shelly, what in the world were you doing? I was trying to get that package up there. I nodded towards the package. Why? That's your mother's birthday gift. Why do you want that? Oh, Dad helped me to my feet. Are you and Gideon up to something? Dad 